coming on the downstream side of that culvert. This is snake heaven right here. Got cinder blocks for rip wrap. Looks like my ram pump's about half buried. So I got a rope tied on this little bush. That'll help me get down this hill. Go down there and work on the pump. As you can see, I put the standpipe back on the uh, on the supply line, and then I got a drive pipe, one inch drive pipe coming to my ram pump. It it used to be straight. I had a uh, rebar dri driven into the creek bed and had it tied up, but that last flood wreaked havoc down here. It was less than three inches of rain. Problem was, it all came at one time. The topography of this creek right here changes more than the than the channel at Oregon Inlet, North Carolina. I mean, a week from now, I'll come down here and maybe none of this sand will be here. You know, it, it's just hard to say. I, it, sometimes it builds up on the on this side of the creek, and other times the sand builds up over there. I quit worrying about it months ago. I, I'm just going to try to clear a way to get to my pump. All the business is upstream. This is the receiving end here. Doesn't really matter about the sand as long as it's not in my check valve. Seems like check valve's working okay. But I don't think I have as much pressure as I normally do. Now here comes the souring. Yeah. Maybe I need to clean my pressure tank out or something. I don't know what's happening here. If I had my wrench, I'd take this thing off, make sure it's clean in there. Yeah, I've got a, a drain valve, a clean out valve just below my standpipe. It's two inches in diameter. And usually when I open that, the water's gushing out of that that pipe just like a fire hydrant and today it's only about half half the pressure I did clean out the intake but I suspect that somewhere in that supply line there's probably a bend or a little rise in it that may have collected a lot of sand and the thing is that's too deep for me to wade across to go over there and easily open that up and try and get it flowing better I don't really feel like climbing this mountain, <laughs> this, this hill, and going back on the other side of the road. So I'm just going to sit here for a while, let this thing build up some pressure, and then I'll open up my uh, my delivery line. See, something's not right here. I suspect there's something in there. Okay. Well, hopefully whatever I do does not require a tool. I wish I had a better place to install my ram pump, but for it's over a thousand feet up, up this creek to the spring, and it gushes out of the spring because there's a couple of big rocks there that form a, a dam, but uh, it's too far away from my house to do anything, and uh, Plus, it, the, the creek just zigzags like a snake, real short turns, uh, you know, about every 12, 15 feet it makes a turn way upstream there. So this is really the only place where I've got any, any head. I've probably got a foot and a half of drop uh, at the top of those rocks on the other side of the culvert, maybe a foot at the most, and then maybe a foot and a half here coming down this this culvert and then maybe another two feet so you know we're, we're looking at probably a little less than five feet of, of head head pressure it's the best I can do gotta work with what you got Pressure's up a little bit above 40 PSI, so I'm going to turn that off. 
and open up my delivery line. Okay, let's go up to the house and see if any water's coming up that delivery line yet. It ain't a pretty round pump, but it's functional. This is a uh, this is a log crib that I used last winter, but this spring I stole it and brought it down here to the creek. I use it for protection against logs and other stuff that might come roaring out of this pipe when, when we have these splash floods around here. And so far it's been working pretty good. I've had zero damage in five months to the to the pump itself. And I've got it sitting on uh, some cast iron grates that came off of a barbecue grill that rusted away. And like I say, you know, w once I get this thing going pretty good, the, the waste water coming out of the check valve will uh, wash away all that sand and that'll leave a couple of inches of space underneath the frame. Things get back to normal. All right. I think I've done all I can do down here. I got a clock, I got a cup, and I got water coming out of my delivery line. I'm gonna see how many seconds it takes to fill this 32 ounce cup up. Uh, when the pump's working good, I can do a cup in one minute and 15 seconds, which means that I get a gallon every five minutes. 12 gallons an hour. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get 12 gallons today. It just doesn't look quite as strong. But hopefully we can get at least 10 gallons an hour out of this. Let's, let's see. Go. I think I've got about 5 feet of, of drop down there on my system. Head, 5 foot ahead. And I heard that uh, these things can provide lift up to seven times the head, so that's about right. Uh, I'm about 35 to 40 feet above my ram pump right now in elevation. And uh, I know that if I if I raise the supply line up one foot higher, nothing will come out of it. That's how close we're calling it. Okay, that has been 45 seconds. And I'm about three quarters full but hard to tell the cup is tapered. Whoops, missed my cup. Just one minute. I don't think we're gonna do it in 115. It's gonna be close. Right, that's one minute and fifteen seconds and I'm not quite full yet. One minute, uh, 25 seconds. Have to do the math on that, uh, but it's less than 12 gallons a minute, uh, 12 gallons an hour. I still think I can probably get about 10 gallons an hour out of it. You, know, you get 250 gallons a day. I, I can fill this pool up twice a week, no problem at all. Okay, uh, I don't know if that was helpful to you or not. But I just figured I'd take you along with me because I didn't know what was wrong with my pump. And turns out it was a standpipe had come loose. All right. Next time it messes up, I'll take you along with me. Have a good day.